Now that we've covered what's going on with the movement of food through the digestive tract, beginning in the mouth and working all the way through to the anus, it's time to go back to the beginning and take a look at what's going on with chemical digestion and absorption in each of these areas. So if we go back up to the mouth, we already said that chemical digestion begins in the mouth, and that's due to the saliva. The saliva contains three different enzymes that begin the breakdown of molecules in the mouth. First, the saliva contains salivary amylase. The salivary part just means it's in the saliva. And amylase is an enzyme that breaks down starch into sugars. So salivary amylase will begin the digestion of starch in the mouth, breaking it down into sugars. There's also a salivary lipase. A lipase is an enzyme that breaks down fats into fatty acids. So salivary lipase will begin digesting fats in the mouth while you chew. The last enzyme that we have in the saliva is lysozyme. And we talked about lysozyme when we discussed the immune system. That's because lysozyme breaks down the cell walls of bacteria. This is not so important for obtaining nutrition, but it is important for destroying pathogens before they get any further into your body. As we mentioned before, some absorption can actually happen through the mucosa of the mouth. We can absorb some glucose, um, alcohol, there are certain vitamins and ions that we're able to absorb through the mucosa of the mouth. We also absorb some drugs right through the mucosa of the mouth. A couple of advantages of administering a drug through the mouth as opposed to actually swallowing it into the stomach is that you can get faster absorption. If you hold something under the tongue and it absorbs right away into the mucosa, you skip the steps where you have to go down into the stomach and turn it around a while. Another advantage is that you can avoid sending the drug into the environment of the stomach. There are some drugs that would be destroyed by the low pH or the digestive enzymes in the stomach. They can be absorbed through the mouth without that concern. One more advantage is that there are some drugs that upset the stomach and cause nausea, and having them absorbed through the mucosa can avoid that in some cases. Let's move on to taking a look at digestion and absorption in the stomach. When we looked at the mucosa of the stomach, we noticed the presence of these gastric pits, or sort of deep grooves where we find cells down in the bottom. There are several different types of cells in these gastric pits, and these different types of cells secrete different sorts of enzymes or substances into the stomach. We're going to start by looking at the parietal cells. Parietal cells secrete two different things. They secrete intrinsic factor and hydrochloric acid. Intrinsic factor is important for being able to absorb vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is too big to be transported easily um, from your digestive system into your bloodstream. But intrinsic factor takes care of the problem by binding to the vitamin B12 and then binding to mucosal cells. Intrinsic factor triggers endocytosis of the vitamin B12 and allows it to be absorbed that way. The second important secretion of the parietal cells is HCl, or hydrochloric acid. This is what produces the incredibly low pH of the stomach. The hydrochloric acid produced by the parietal cells has a pH of only 1 or 2, which is very acidic. A lot of people think that this acid breaks down molecules, but in fact, it doesn't do much chemical digestion. What it is important for is destroying pathogens, for denaturing or unfolding proteins, which is important for chemical digestion to occur. We have to take the folded up protein and allow it to unfold before different enzymes can break it apart. And the low pH is also important for activating enzymes. There are a number of enzymes that are made inside your cells and then secreted into the stomach or intestinal lumen in an inactive form. And the low pH, the hydrochloric acid, can activate those enzymes. The chief cells are a different type of cell that we find in the gastric pits in the stomach. The chief cells secrete pepsinogen and gastric lipase. Pepsinogen is an inactive form of an enzyme that's made in the chief cells and then released into the stomach lumen. Once it's in the stomach lumen, the hydrochloric acid cleaves that into the active form of the enzyme that's called pepsin. Pepsin takes long polypeptides, long proteins, and chops them up into smaller pieces, into smaller peptides. Why do you think we would go to the trouble of making pepsin in an inactive form, pepsinogen, and then only activating it once it's actually in the stomach lumen. 
Think for just a minute about what would happen if we made an active form of pepsin inside your chief cells. Pepsin breaks down proteins. It would begin breaking down the proteins inside your chief cells, which would then destroy the cells. So the cells make an inactive form. Only once it's been put into the stomach is it activated into a form that can break down proteins. The second secretion that was released by the chief cells is the gastric lipase. Gastric means it's made in the stomach, and lipase, as we saw before, is an enzyme that's going to break lipids or fats down into fatty acids. Gastric lipase is actually a lot more important in infants than it is in adults, and that's because infants have a very high fat diet. There's a high percentage of fat in the milk that they drink, so they need more lipase to be able to break that down. Adults don't have such a high fat diet, so we don't need gastric lipase as much. Something to take a moment to consider is how the stomach can deal with all those secretions. With all of the acid and the enzymes, what keeps the stomach itself from being destroyed? There are several features of the stomach that help it withstand the tough environment that it creates with its secretions. First, the epithelial cells are held together by tight junctions. Remember that tight junctions hold cells very closely together so nothing can leak between. That's important for protecting the underlying tissues past the epithelium. The epithelium itself is protected by a layer of mucus. This mucus is produced by the mucus cells or goblet cells in the stomach and this layer of mucus helps to keep the acid and the secretions from laying right on the epithelium. Now despite both of those things, being an epithelial cell in the stomach is still a pretty hazardous job. The typical lifespan of a stomach epithelial cell is only a few days. So the epithelial cells need to be replaced every three to six days. And this is done by a number of regenerative cells that are found down in the gastric pits that are dividing by mitosis all the time to keep up a steady supply of epithelial cells to replace those that are being damaged by the harsh environment. Although the conditions in other areas of the intestine are not quite as harsh as in the stomach, the same sorts of protective measures are still found there. For example, in the small intestine, there are tight junctions and a mucus layer and a lot of cells regenerating all the time, as well as in the large intestine. Absorption does occur in the stomach. Some molecules are able to make it across the mucosa of the stomach and get into the bloodstream. Um, these include things like water, alcohol, um, some ions as well as some drugs like aspirin. These are things where you can consume them and they get into your bloodstream relatively quickly without having to wait to go through all the way to the small intestine. 